Item number eight, public hearings. I'm going to hold the public hearing, waive the first reading, and introduce ordinances as presented in the notice of proposed increased mail to all property owners. Item number A, ordinance imposing a 2.61% rate increase to ecology, garbage, and recycling services for 2013-2014 to be effective September 1st, 2013. And item B, ordinance imposing a 4.48% rate increase for recology to initiate an organics program to the effective January 1st, 2014. I'd like to get comments from staff, please. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council. Uh, as you're aware, the current franchise agreement with Recology San Bruno entitles Recology to a rate adjustment each year uh, with a three-year cycle of a detailed rate analysis each, every three years with an interim rate adjustment. Thank you. With the interim rate adjustment in the two years in between those detailed rate years. The current year rate proposal is a detailed rate year analysis. Um, as I have presented at previous City Council meetings, uh, the city did receive a detailed rate analysis uh, from Recology on March 1st in accordance with the franchise agreement. We have reviewed that rate adjustment. That rate proposal was 2.17%. Uh, however, due to the, the choice to delay the rate implementation from July 1st to September 1st, that rate adjustment is 2.61%. The City Council approved the mailing of the notice on May 14, 2013 to notify all property owners of the rate increase and that notice was mailed on May 24. The base rate adjustment of 2.61% uh, was advertised to go into effect September 1st as well as a supplemental proposal for the organics program that would go into effect January 1st, 2014. That would result in an 8.96% rate adjustment overall to be phased in over the course of the first year of the organics program. The ordinance this evening would request council action on the implementation of the fir first rate adjustment of 4.48% effective January 1st. With the following two rate adjustments to go into effect July 1st and January, July 1st, 2014, and January 1st, 2015. So what I'd like to do is spend a few minutes discussing what the proposed organics collection is. The or what is organics and what are the benefits to the community? What organics does is it diverts waste from the landfills and so it offers an opportunity for residents to take their food waste from the, gray, the current existing gray garbage bin and put it into the green yard waste bin. That helps the city continue to meet its diversion goals. The current diversion goal mandated by the state of California is 75% by the year 2020. The city's current diversion rate is 56%. And so in order for the city to continue moving towards that 75% diversion goal, uh, organics is a, uh, a mechanism for that to occur. What it also does is it provides an opportunity for residents and businesses to all participate in organics composting. We've heard from many residents who state that they currently compost already in their backyard, how, which, is, which is great. However, not everybody has the opportunity to compost. Some people live in multifamily residential units and don't have a, a place to do that composting. What this program offers is a simple manner for in, everybody in the city, both residential and commercial businesses, to participate in this program. And I would uh, also add that this program, the implementation of this program, similar to single stream recycling, uh, where people could previously take the recycles, recyclables in and receive funds for that, some people did participate. The implementation of single stream recycling similarly allowed an opportunity for everybody to participate from their home. What organics does is it allows people to dispose of their food waste and their food waste materials in their existing green waste, green yard waste bin. So you can dispose of your food waste with your yard trimmings. 
it is the main change and the main driver of the rate increase of 8.96% is that it moves the collection from the current collection schedule uh, for the green waste bin from a biweekly <coughs> schedule to a weekly schedule. So that requires additional trucks and additional drivers to provide that increased level of service. So that is the main driver for the increased cost of the program. There have been concerns about the fact that disposing of food waste in the green waste <coughs> bin could create messiness and smell. And I would, what I would just do is remind that this food waste is already out at the curbside. However, it is currently in the gray garbage bin. The main difference is that moving to the green uh, yard waste bin, uh, you no longer can utilize a plastic bag to contain <coughs> that yard waste as the proposed program is a uh, bagless program, meaning that you not, are not allowed to use plastic bags, including biodegradable bags. You are allowed to use paper bags and newspaper clippings to contain that food waste and utilize that to dispose of that food waste in your green waste bin. However, the main difference is that food waste is, would not be contained in a plastic bag going forward. This material, this, the green waste bin, the food waste, it is picked up and is taken to a different processor to create a more high quality compost uh, at the end. And this compost would be available to residents uh, for free as part of this program. Uh, in similar, just a similar uh, analogy would be the moving towards the single stream recycling when the city moved in that direction, I believe back in 2005, the revenue, the money that Recology receives from the sale of those recyclables does come back and is, is calculated as part of an offset to the overall rate. So residents do receive a credit for the funds that Recology receives for those recyclable materials. So similar to that benefit that the community receives, this, ben this program would provide a benefit in that the city residents could, could get compost for free. This next slide is just an overview of some of the examples of what would be allowed to be disposed of in the green waste bin under the organics program. A very quick overview and a comparison of San Bruno's rates to some other cities. You'll see that San Bruno, the most popular garbage bin size is a 32 gallon today. So that 32 gallon rate today is 24.34. The proposed rate adjustment to go into effect, the base rate adjustment uh, for current services to go into effect on September 1st is 2.61% uh, would put the rate at 24.98. With the first rate adjustment that has been proposed for action this evening to begin the implementation of the organics program on January 1st, 2014, and that 4.48% rate adjustment, the 32 gallon can be, goes to a cost of $26.09. Now I want to be clear that the, the proposed organics program does require an overall rate adjustment of 8.96%. However, the proposal is to phase that in over the first year of the program as the costs are incurred by Recology. So it wouldn't be an 8.96% rate adjustment on day one of the program, uh, but over three different rate adjustments. So at the end of that rate adjustment, you would still have another 2.24% rate increase twice. The reason why the total rate has not been, is not seen here at the end of the 8.96% is due to the fact that Recology will be entitled to a rate adjustment next July as part of the franchise agreement. And so we don't know what that rate adjustment could be. And so we don't know with certainty what the rate will be at the end of the implementation of the organics rate in January 2015. So this just provides a perspective of where San Bruno falls and also a comparison of, to those cities that are currently offering organics and those who are not offering organics. So this evening, we will have a public hearing. We have received written responses to the property owner notice that went out on May 24th. As of 5 o'clock this evening, we had received 347 written responses. There are two proposed ordinances that are um, for your consideration this evening. Ordinance A would um, authorize a rate adjustment for base services, existing base services of 2.61% effective September 1st, 2013. 
Ordinance B would initiate, would authorize the organics program to begin on January 1st, 2014 and authorize the first rate adjustment of 4.48%. I also have a note here that a future amendment to the franchise agreement would be necessary if the council chose to move forward with organics because we would have to uh, basically integrate the um, service for the organic service into the existing franchise agreement. So if we do move forward with that, we will have to return at a future date with that amendment. So that concludes my portion of the presentation. I will hand it over to the city manager for a few additional comments. Uh, thank you. I wanted to follow up on the comments of the finance director having to do specifically with the written notice and protest process that I think has uh, encouraged a large audience here tonight and probably many people who would like to speak to you during the public hearing. And I wanted to, um, first of all, address the means by which the city council is informed of those protests and those comments that the city has received over the last 45 days, as well as address um, and reiterate on a couple of topics that presented themes in the written responses that the city received. As the finance director indicated, we received a total of 347 written uh, pieces of mail that uh, responded to the notice that we mailed out 45 days ago. Uh, among those written items were a number of actual thoughtful letters and uh, comments that residents wanted the City Council to know. For the audience purposes and for those uh, viewing at home, I, I want to clarify that the City Council has received a copy of each and every one of the comments that were received, including photocopies of postcards that have a standard message on them. So both the written, the letters that you received, as well as each and every one of the pieces of correspondence have been copied and distributed to each of the city council members. For the purposes of your consideration of this item uh, before you tonight and uh, returning to you for additional action at your next city council meeting. The um, city typically reviews carefully every piece of response that we receive and we count those. And, and again, we have totaled those up to 347. We've also made an analysis of the, uh, the extent to which those protests uh, comply with the specific provisions of Proposition 218 that call for those items to be, um, uh, to specifically identify the name of the property owner and the parcel number or the address. So again, while everything is reported to you and you uh, receive everything and we count everything that has been received, were we to get into a situation where there would be a need to evaluate more carefully, um, there, there are certain rules that apply to what constitutes a legitimate protest. For the purposes of your consideration tonight, w we would recommend to you that, again, you have 347 people who have corresponded with you in writing. Um, among the topics that the items that we've received by mail address are questions or comments about why do we need an organics program, um, particularly because it represents a new cost to the ratepayers. Um, among the items that are compelling in terms of, or, or that are informative in terms of the city's interest in moving forward with the implementation of an organics program is the fact that this type of collection service is quickly becoming a standard in the solid waste collection and disposal industry in part because throughout the state of California there is a uh, first under an older state law, AB 939, a mandated requirement for cities like ours to divert from landfills at least 50% of the waste stream. 
I'm pleased to report to you that the city of San Bruno does meet that statewide mandate. And in fact, at the current time, our diversion from landfills with our single stream recycling program and the um, efficient collection service that we currently operate is at a level of 56%. That's good news. Statewide, uh, st the state has adopted yet another uh, objective, and that is for diversion of 75% of the waste stream from landfills via recycling and other methodologies of 75% by the year 2020. That's actually only about seven years away from now. Um, and requires a significant additional effort on the part of this city and other communities throughout the state of California. I mentioned that diversion via an organics program is quickly becoming a standard. It is certainly uh, a, uh, a standard already in our county and currently of the 21 municipal jurisdictions, including the 20 cities and the unincorporated area of San Mateo County, 14 of those jurisdictions currently uh, provide an organics collection program for their residents. One more is currently actively in process of soliciting an organics program. Two more uh, will be considering it shortly and, and of course this item is on your agenda tonight. The um, Items that we've received in the mail uh, further address issues about why do I need to have Recology provide a organics program, I already compost. This is the finance director indicated, and, and let me back up and say there are many, many individuals in our community who are already proactively initiating in their own households uh, waste diversion programs, and we certainly applaud that and encourage that. Finance director indicated that uh, among the purposes of this program is to make sure that organics collection and convenient waste diversion techniques are available throughout the community to every household. And that includes multifamily households, which number a, a pretty significant number in San Bruno, where the activity of composting is at least difficult, if not uh, really impossible for, for the household. Um, in addition, the program on a citywide basis, implementation of the program, provides a, in a convenient and efficient way of, of, of diverting waste on a community-wide basis. And as I indicated, that, that's important to the community and to the state uh, environmental goals. The um, other issues that were raised in the items that we received in the mail have to do with uh, attraction of vermin or other um, uh, complexities associated with uh, maintaining the food waste in the green waste barrel. As the finance director indicated, there is not a, a huge difference between the, the fact that the the food waste now would go into the, a different card, um, with the exception that the fact of the fact that the plastic bag would not be allowed to contain the food waste in the green waste card. Uh, Recology San Bruno advises us that there is information uh, available to residents that will be uh, provided as part of the implementation program to proactively um, uh, advise and educate about how these types of issues, odor and vermin and um, other types of concerns that people may have can be proactively addressed with some fairly simple management techniques that are, are easy for the household to implement uh, via the green waste disposal can. Um, questions have been raised regarding the uh, monies that Recology already receives and other waste uh, haulers receive through their collection of recyclables. As you know, we have a uh, single stream recyclable collection program that is heavily utilized in San Bruno today and is, as I indicated before, successfully diverting uh, a large volume of waste away from the landfills. Uh, Recology does uh, generate some money 
as a result of selling those recyclable materials. And though, although markets have fluctuated and the price uh, that they can get for recyclables is actually not terribly high, any and all monies that are received by Recology for the sale of recyclables and others of their business activities related to services in San Bruno directly result in a lower rate requirement. So any revenues, any monies that Recology is able to obtain by selling recyclables goes directly back to paying for the costs of services that they provide in San Bruno and thereby reducing the amount of cost that needs to be borne by ratepayers directly. And lastly, and this is um, an issue of, uh, I'm sure, a very high level concern to the City Council, is the, the general concern or uh, complaint that there are many households in the City of San Bruno, like elsewhere, who um, simply uh, experience any rate increase to be a burden um, that, uh, that would not include only households that are um, currently existing on fixed incomes, but it, 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 it does need to be recognized that additional costs um, can create a burden for households and may for some be um, simply unaffordable. The City of San Bruno offers a very significant uh, discount to low-income families who can qualify. Um, we accept applications through our utility billing office in the finance department at City Hall, and we evaluate those and uh, implement that discount on an annual basis. Um, in addition to that, the uh, Recology San Bruno uh, does offer a small a uh, toter, a small capacity toter, particularly for smaller households and or for um, uh, individuals who are generating, a, uh, households that are generating a particularly low level of waste. Um, that 20 gallon toter uh, comes at a discount price and is an option that is available to um, uh, persons who can, who can manage their waste stream with that technique. So we, we, we offer those as a couple of ideas about how households can uh, more effectively manage the costs. Um, with that, again, I would just emphasize that you have um, uh, in front of you today, and uh, uh, including a large stack of items that were received in the mail just today, so you've just now received those, um, all 347 of the written comments that we've received from residents. And uh, tonight's agenda includes a public hearing during which uh, you are required to offer an opportunity to anybody who wishes to speak. And at the close of that uh, public hearing, we will include any additional written comments that we receive in giving you a final count. Thank you. Thank you. Council, have any questions of staff at this time before we open the public hearing? OK. Uh, Considering the size of the crowd tonight, I've asked the clerk to provide some comment cards. Uh, it has your name, your street name, and your question. I'll read the question and we'll answer that question through staff or Recology, who happens to be here this evening. So do you have some more comment cards, Carol? Yes, sir. And they're sitting right there at the door if you want to fill one out and give it to the clerk. Yeah, the mic is working. Can you hear it? All right, at this time, I'd like to open the public hearing, and I'll start by reading these questions as I receive them. The first one is from Mr. Alan Lubke, and he says, oh, Mr. Lubke, I'm going to read your question and get an answer for you. Yeah, I'd like to speak for myself, if you don't mind. Well, you may, but uh, it precludes this, and I'll give, you, I'll give you one minute. Why are you only giving me one minute? Because of the size of the crowd. That shouldn't make a difference. The tradition is that you're you get wasting three your minutes. time, Mr. Lubke. Assuming that more than 50 percent of the 12,851 parcels 
in the city of San Bruno subject to the proposed rate increase, and I'm not sure of the English here, if the city receives a protest from a majority, that would be six, what would happen? What would be the, pro, what's your protocol if before the end of this hearing that over half of the people object to ordinance A and ordinance B? Okay, I'll get an answer for you. Is that all? Well, yes, no, that's not all. I, I, I would like to know why uh, the comments by the uh, city manager weren't in the in the flyer. I mean, uh, assuming I would like to so have, I'd like to support this program. Why wait until this public hearing to talk about compelling, compelling answers or compelling issues? One of which is 75% requirement by 2020. And then I also I object to uh, the issue of not putting uh, garbage in a plastic bag as opposed to just putting it in a plastic bag is in fact a huge difference, not a not a few huge difference. Thank you. I appreciate your answer. All right, thank you. I'll give that to staff regarding uh, what would happen if more than 50% of the uh, of the uh, property owners decided to. Staff, I'm I'm going to get an answer oh. for you. Also, in the in the recology flyer that was mailed to every household, it says right here, adding an organics program to save your weekly services will help San Bruno meet the statewide goal of diverting 75% of our waste from the landfill. So that was actually in the flyer. Um, No, it doesn't. If the city were to receive uh, a 50% plus one, a majority protest in writing with the name of the property owner and the identification of the parcel in San Bruno, the city council would be precluded from taking an action to enact a rate increase. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is Joe Yankee. Uh, why a 4.5% increase, same amount of garbage? I think that was the answer, but yeah, I, that, I just wanted to let people know that you did ask it. So, um, Patricia Merzen, uh, what ways has the city of San Bruno studied to offset the cost of organic recycling besides raising the rates? As the finance director indicated, we have reviewed the program in detail through a third party expert uh, with experience in solid waste collection and disposal programs. And that um, expert review has demonstrated to us that the program offers an efficient and effective way of dealing with the um, implementation of the program. I, I'm not answering, I, I'm not um, uh, specifically addressing the what did we do to do it without a rate increase because in fact uh, implementation of this kind of program it, on a community-wide scale, um, we, we know of no viable alternatives for doing that without a rate increase. However, we have addressed the program and the cost efficiency of the program, keeping the cost at the lowest possible amount by virtue of the third party evaluation and um, uh, continued dialogue uh, between the expert as well and uh, recology as well as our staff to satisfy ourselves that this program is being done in the most efficient and cost-effective way possible. Could you? Thank you. Thank you. Step to the, step to the podium, please, and, and just make it brief, if you would. And I asked what ways have been studied to offset the cost of the organics was mm -hmm. it doesn't sound like it sounds like a rubber stamp of recology's request for a rate increase as opposed to studying or different ways that 
the, the monies could be found. That that's was my point. And so it sounds like we haven't we haven't thought about how else we can how can we raise more money so that the increase doesn't have to be as high as it is. Was I would, not to, it doesn't directly answer your question, but I would add that the outside party that we did engage to review this rate proposal, uh, we engaged them not just to look through the mechanics of the numbers itself, but the mechanics of the program and the, the delivery of the program as it was proposed by Recology. So when Recology brought this forward and said that, you know, this, this new program would require three new routes, two to serve the residential community, one new route to serve the commercial community, uh, we wanted an outside expert with familiarity in this area to tell us whether or not that was legitimate and that those three routes were in fact necessary to service the entire community. So that, that is what was performed, uh, was that type of analysis to confirm that the mechanics of the program and the dollars associated with those additional routes. Then that was one subject matter expert and I would be curious to know or find out what other types of uh, companies that do have put this in, in progress, was it necessary for them to do an 8% increase? Or were there other, other ways and means that they used to do it? And I, I don't think it's been studied. It doesn't sound like it's been studied long enough. And, and enough, it's been looked at enough different ways to me. All right. Why don't we do this? We have representatives from Ecology. If, Kirsten, if you could uh, go to the podium, because I think you're going to have to answer some of these questions. I know that this is a new program in San Bruno, but maybe you could give a little background as to what Recology does in other cities and the track record. Sure. Um, as the finance director and the city manager stated that many cities in our community are utilizing the program currently. We did reach out to our other communities to find out, to gain some expertise on how to make this program as efficient as possible. Um, we did work with the, work with the, um, the addresses in San Bruno to route and reroute many different scenarios to find the best method that would work best for the residents of San Bruno. And we did dwindle it down to just two routes, which is, um, it, it'll be effective, it'll be a full day for the drivers, and we didn't, you know, we could have spread it out to three and, and made it kind of, you know, a little easier, but we tried to be as efficient and effective as possible and did route and reroute these routes as, off, you know, as, as tight as we could before we delivered this to the city. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, Bella Dagovich. Okay. Uh, how do you think the recology will work? The experience in Newark did not work and was reversed. If this is the reason to increase the, rate, in, increase the rates, uh, you better find a more doable solution. I don't know how we can answer this, but it, maybe it didn't work in Newark, but it, I know it works in a lot of other cities, so. Uh. Yeah, look, I, I just consulted with uh, Recology to, to learn that we are not aware of uh, the situation in Newark. Uh, we can certainly gather more information about that uh, for the city council. If, if uh, members of the audience have that information, we would certainly be interested in receiving it. Our understanding, consulting with many of our neighbors and others uh, throughout the um, broader Bay Area region, is that the programs have been very successfully implemented and um, that, in fact, uh, Recology is receiving requests not only from commercial businesses in San Bruno, but from residential households to, who are interested in, in having the type of program that our neighbors in other communities have. Okay. Um, Mike, it looks like Brainy. hope I'm saying that correctly. Yeah, I disapprove of the composting program rate increase for garbage company recology. So there's, uh, if you could make it brief, please, to the podium. Different cities. Speak, speak right into that. I'm mic. sorry. The rates posted for the different cities um, 
I find that hard to compare just because the geographic size, the demographics of the different cities, number of residences, and number of commercial businesses, the population. So that to me is an unfair comparison. Uh, different companies, I don't know if Recology does them all or not. The other question I have is um, the process that's used with these flyers is, you know, it's stated in there 50% or majority, you know, of the uh, 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 buildings here. Um, why didn't you include, uh, say, a postcard, reply card that people could reply with, whether they agree or disagree with rate increases with an organics program? Um, to me, that seems like that'd be a fair way to do it. It's not the same as an election on, on a bond or something like that, but at least you can almost have a, you know, a, a majority response in that process rather than requiring people to show up here, sign their letters, send them in with you know, the required information and, and their uh, comment or whatever. Um, to me, that doesn't sound like a fair process. I don't know what city ordinances or your constitution says how you approve these type of ordinances that ultimately cost more to the, the, uh, the, the city population. Well, uh, let me get an answer from the, from the city attorney, but I believe San Bruno went uh, actually out of its way uh, regarding the notification of this, and uh, maybe the city attorney can explain that. Right, the notification process is actually prescribed by state law and not by any city ordinance. Uh, state law says that the process required is called a protest hearing, so it's not an election where you're voting for things in favor or against. It's only a process by which people have a right to protest a particular action. So the notice that we sent to um, all of the uh, parcel owners in San Bruno was an uh, effort to comply with state law so because state law says that every parcel owner gets, gets a vote. We actually made our notice slightly broader than that because we also said if you're a Recology customer, you can submit a protest uh, as well. And so we tried to uh, encourage the maximum participation of not only property owners who may or may not live in the city, but also Recology customers. So the, the process does comply with state law. It's not a requirement that the, the city has any say over how to comply with it. Okay, it just seems to me it's a one-sided process because we don't really have a say. You guys ultimately make the, make the call on this. Um, and you said you use the word vote. There's no vote. Just, it, it's, this just doesn't seem like a fair process and a democratic process to me. Right. Well, uh, I don't want to give you more time than anybody else, but right. let, let me say a couple of things. When you talked about comparing one city to another, yeah, it's not going to be apples and apples, but we always try, whether it be water rates or garbage rates or any other kind of rate, to give you a comparison because uh, ultimately we get the questions, you know, my, my sister lives in so-and-so and she pays less than you. Or we, we try to give you some type of a comparison, even though it's really not a fair one because the peninsula is so diverse as far as, as, far as the, the, the type of people that live in certain cities, uh, the wealth factor in certain cities, the microclimates in certain cities. Recology here in San Bruno has some real challenges uh, because we have a flat land here and we have some hills that maybe aren't uh, the same as in maybe a foster city. So it's not a fair comparison, but it gives you an idea of what in fact you and I are, are putting out of our, our, our pockets. So I understand your question, but we try to give you some type of a comparison. And San Bruno, for the most part, has always been kind of in the middle of all of that. You can see some cities, and uh, you know maybe they're wealthier than ours, but they're paying almost twice as much. So uh, that's that comment there. Tried to be as fair as we can to get the word out. We had um, you know this flyer sent out to you a long time ago. We really didn't have to do a lot of this. But in fairness, we wanted to get the word out, especially because this organics program is unique. And uh, in fact, it's, it's going to have to happen if we're going to reach the diversion rate of 75% by 2020. So there's a pilot program going to start, I think, this week. 
actually, in certain neighborhoods that were picked by Recology to see how, in fact, it's going to work. So they'll get some feedback uh, before it's actually implemented. So that's what I can tell you there. The next one is Mr. Riekel. Um, I'm not sure what I understand. It says item 9 left not on the agenda. Oh, okay. All right. That, that's fine. That's fine. It looks like uh, Perry Peterson, garbage, no increase, Prop 218, bogus. Thank you. I think <clears throat> I'll start with uh, a little bit of my background. I've been on the a Recycle Commission in the city of Oakland for several years. So I was introduced to the earlier legislated requirement to divert 50% of the waste stream. <clears throat> and uh, for that matter, I would like to recommend to the city of San Bruno that they form a recycling commission because it's very likely, I believe, that you could divert a lot more than you have. You only have diverted 56%, which is 6% above the absolute minimum that was required. I think, I think there must be some missed opportunities here. <clears throat> uh, secondly, the reason I said Prop 218 is bogus is because you, I agree, it's the law, and you followed it with your, you even exceeded your requirement, as your attorney says. But as a practical matter, Prop 218 pretends to be a vote of the people. It pretends to be a vote. Your notice was not even a proper notice in that it was buried inside a lot of other material. It wasn't a separate mailing. There was no postcard to send back. There was no envelope to put any note in. So it's a miracle that you got 347 messages from citizens. Many of them probably, like myself, believe this was a slam dunk. Don't fight City Hall. It's a done deal. I, I believe that. Maybe I'm wrong, but I believe that. I think you should shelve the 8.9% and give it another look. Having uh, raw garbage in those cans, it, it can be a, a, a rodent problem. If not increasing the crow population past its already nightmarish increase in San Bruno. I just think it's not, I don't think it's the right thing. I think, I have never seen a public hearing held in the fashion this one has been, where the chair reads summary comments of individuals who believed that they were filling out speaker's cards and then said, I'll read these and if you want to say something, you can. I think that's part of a process It gives every appearance of a board, a, a, a council that has already made up its mind on this matter. It, this, this whole hearing is almost a charade simply because you need 50% uh, a 50 protest vote in writing by today to be successful. It's uh, almost impossible. Davis, California went through this process on a similar issue, and they got out of their 11,000 uh, property owners, I think they got something like 4,000. That was really remarkable. And they're still up in arms about it there. So in summary, I thank you very much for your time. I hope you vote uh, not to go ahead with this. This is a 10% increase in rates. It might, uh, might as well be made on day one. Whole, introducing it over a year. Well, you could, you could introduce it over two years if you waited one month more for the third increase. I'm, I'm disappointed. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. To, uh, <laughs> to Recology, there was a, a specific question about raw garbage and potential for rodents and things. Uh, maybe you can address that? Sure. 
Um, we are going to have on our website, again, we were able to reach out to our other communities that currently utilize the organics program and get tips from them as to what their residents are doing to prevent the vermin or the, or the rodents from, from getting into their green container. So we are going to put that up um, by, t by this evening, actually. It's already up there. And um, again, you're just moving it from one cart to another. Um, it, it is already at the curb, um, but we do understand that there are animals that can come around, but again, we're going to provide you plenty of tips. Then you can pick and choose the ones that you might want to try to prevent the um, the animals. All right, thank you. And just uh, just for the record, uh, this is not a slam dunk, and we don't uh, do anything behind closed doors. I mean, Mr. Peterson, you should know better than anybody else, uh, having been involved with uh, lots of committees and stuff in this city. So um, I just want to say that. Thank you. Very quick. I, I did not say behind closed doors, and I reject that concept. Right. I think I, you do hold public here. Right. Thank you. All right. Val Morgan um, has an objection to the garbage collection rate increase. Yeah, I just could do that. At the podium, please. At, so you at the podium. I don't have a question as such, just a couple of comments. And I'll be very brief. Um, my name is Val Morgan. I live at Shelter Creek, and I'm vice president on the board up there. And uh, part of our, the board's responsibility to our residents is to keep increases at a minimum to, to avoid uh, large increases in dues to the, our owners. Uh, we run a very tight ship at Shelter Creek with the help of our management. Uh, we draw up accurate budgets and we usually stick to them very, very closely. Um, part of our, in, the, in fact, in recent years, we had two years where we had no increase in rates at all, uh, even despite the economic uh, problems at the moment. Uh, our utility expenses to the city and PGE are amongst our biggest ticket items. And the, we constantly try and economize on all of these items like electricity, water, and so on to keep costs down. In fact, at the moment, we have a huge program going on where we're changing all our toilets to the low flush toilets to economize on water. And this is just one of many things that we're doing. But all of our efforts to keep costs down seem to be futile because the city and uh, pg and &E costs keep going up the whole time, no matter what we do. We try and economize, save, uh, be as cost-saving as possible, but it, it just doesn't seem to work. So um, on the face of it, um, this uh, vote on the increase seems like it's democratic if more than 50% vote against it. But even in a general election, we hardly get 50% turnout of the vote. So at, at, at this juncture, on this particular item, uh, hoping to get 50% turnout to vote is practically impossibility. I agree with the last speaker. It's, it's, I don't think it's a democratic process. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Jim? I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Rico. Real quick, to the gentleman just spoke um, for Shelter Creek, and that you are right, from the, the toilets to the angle stops, you're doing that program within Shelter Creek. Um, was there not a meeting with the Tuberecology, with uh, the associations of yes. that? Can you maybe? Yes. I know yeah. I, I was informed of that this afternoon, so mm -hmm. I just wanted to bring that forward in case not everybody's heard. Yes, we did. Um, our, my Waste Zero Specialist and myself met with the general manager from Shelter Creek and the general manager from Peninsula Place um, to kind of come together to, to talk about the rate increase and, and some things that we can do to help the multifamilies at those locations. Um, we did make some modifications, and um, when he talks about the, the replacement of the low flow toilets, that's fantastic. We've also um, arranged with um, Ronnie at Central Shelter Creek that we're going to do a quarterly pickup of the, um, similar to what the residents, the single family homes get, they get the twice annual bulky item cleanup. We want to make sure that the multifamily residents at the large complexes um, can enjoy that, fee that, that item as well. So quarterly, we're going to offer a debris box to Shelter Creek at no additional cost to take away some of the bulkier items of the Shelter Creek residents. Um, we're also um, going to assist with the diversion of their landscape material um, at Shelter Creek, and we're going to haul their um, landscaping material at no additional cost 
So we're, we're trying to work together as a team to, to help offset you know, a rate increase such as this in such a large complex that is really doing everything they can to recycle and, and divert and, and work with Recology. Thank you. Uh, Doris Mays, pro protest against garbage rate increase to implement organics program. Doris, you want to comment or I'm happy to read your letter. from their fuel use, all right? So that's an unintended consequence. Also, uh, another unintended consequence is that how, how, do, how do we know what actual effect the organics program has on waste reduction to, to the landfill? There's other cities that have been doing this for, I, I don't know, a year or so, maybe a couple of years. There ought to be some data available for that to, to present to the public and to the council that justifies that, uh, the increased cost. And, and simply, the wear on the streets, by more trucks on the streets. You know, those are just things to consider. Also, thing, you know, just human beings being who they are, they're gonna hose out their waste containers on their driveway. And that will go to the stormwater. It's not something they should do, but who's going to enforce that? Are you going to hire another policeman to enforce that? No, of course not. So I just want you to consider that it's not, it's not the best solution to, to the problem. I'd like to know whether, in fact, it will achieve more reduction, significant enough to offset the cost. And also, you know, one of the things that we're doing, we're doing in the wrong direction. We're increasing collections. Frankly, we should be reducing collections because that would really start to look at the real cost to the environment of having waste collection on a frequent basis. And if you compost, which it's possible even under your kitchen sink with a worm, costing, worm composting bin, so you don't necessarily have to have a yard to be able to do that. I appreciate your, your, uh, infer your uh, attention. Thank you. All right, thank you. And uh, you should know Recology, I'm going to ask you to comment on this. Uh, the subcommittee, and, and we do a lot of research in subcommittee before we bring it here, uh, and a lot of those questions were in fact asked and answered. First of all, about your fleet. Is it a solid diesel fleet, or what do you have now? Right now we operate a 20% biodiesel fleet. Okay. So we and do use biodiesel fuel. And that's increasing. I that's mean, the, the, the fleet is, you're slowly yes. building, it up, building it up. Yes. But there's still particular emissions that are Sure. Um, to, again, when we were routing these routes, we tried to reduce the amount of trucks, added trucks that were going to go um, through the city of San Bruno, which is why we're only having to add two to the overall program. Um, to order to offset, I don't know if the offset's the right word, but when we're moving the food waste out of the gray can and putting it into the green, it's then being processed properly at a, at a processing facility where all the methane gases that would normally just go out into the landfill and into our air is now going to be captured. So we're, environmentally, we're, we're moving the methane gas. We're not going to let it go out into the landfills where it's going now when your food waste is in the garbage. We're going to now process it, proper, capture and process it properly. Um, when she spoke about the success of the programs, most of the cities that we can relate to up and down the peninsula have all rolled out organics simultaneously with single stream recycling. So I don't have concrete numbers to say, 
this city rolled it out independently like San Bruno is hoping to, um, to compare it to. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know of a magic number that I'd like it to get to. Um, other cities up and down the peninsula with their single stream recycling program are showing high diversion numbers. But again, I, I can't compare, I don't have an apple and apple to compare to, up in something that would be relative to the community. Do you have any comment or experience with uh, uh, cleaning the cans? Cleaning of the cans that customers rinse them out, goes into, the, into their yard, or um, they can spray them. They don't have to do it every week. It's not something that has to be done weekly. They can spray. Again, we'll have tips on our website to kind of give you a vinegar and water concoction that you can kind of spray on the lid of your can or around the sides of your can and only wash it quarterly if necessary. Okay, and the question came up a long uh, while ago regarding uh, the containment of the organics, uh, not in plastic bags. We have a plastic bag ordinance. It's hard to even get a plastic bag at the store anymore. But uh, t is there anything else we can contain it in so it just doesn't get thrown in with grass clippings? Yes, you can, um, in, your, in the kitchen pail that all the residents and multifamily residents would receive, you can um, put some newspaper in there. You can use a paper bag inside your container. Um, and you, once you put it into your green waste, when it's sprinkled, and you're also allowed to put um, paper napkins and paper towels, those items will also absorb a lot of the moisture that your food will contain. So using those products and putting them into your green waste with your leaves should obtain a lot of the moisture that comes out of the food. All right, and we have a, yeah. a prop. <laughs> yeah. This is the prop. This will be uh, Felicia Nearby, Waste Aero Specialist with Recology San Bruno. Um, this will be the kitchen pail that uh, all residents will receive. Uh, there's a couple different ways that you can you can use it. You can line it with whatever uh, whatever method you prefer. If you have plastic bags, you can line them with plastic bags. You can line the bottom with paper towels, newspaper, paper plates, anything that can absorb liquid, um, so it doesn't sit on the bottom and get smelly and messy. Um, you can use paper bags, like we said, wrap your food scraps in newspaper. Um, an alternative to the kitchen pail, it doesn't work for everybody. Um, some people don't have counter space for it. Um, in cases like that, or those that want to try something else, you can freeze your food scraps. Um, I've spoken with a lot of other residents. It, it sounds silly. I will. Um, it, if, it is, it is an alternative for those that don't like this idea. Um, if you have room in your freezer and want to give it a shot, um, freezing your food scraps and putting them into your green cart the night you roll it out, um, it does stop the decomposition of the food and you don't have that smell or the liquid. It's all frozen and it goes straight in your green cart and is picked up the next day. It's an alternative to think about, um, but this is the kitchen pail that you can use. Um, I also wanted to make a comment about the difference between our um, curbside um, compost program and the backyard compost program. Um, we too want to encourage those that are already composting to continue to do that. The difference with the um, curbside program is we can collect meat, bones, and dairy products. Those, pro those um, products you don't want to put in your backyard composting because they will attract vermin and insects and cause a whole lot of other issues for you. We can collect them curbside. So um, if you're already composting at home and don't want to stop that program, you can participate at the smaller level and just include those, um, those products that you cannot put in your backyard composting. So just want to clarify those differences. Right. Thank you. Next is uh, Mary Stucker. It's very lengthy. Maybe you could just uh, come to the podium and try to get it done that way. I included some comments about the water, too, which shouldn't have been on there. So okay, I speak apologize. right into the microphone. Yes. So I just want to protest um, the increase. I see I'm a, a single person in my house, and I have this huge green bin that I put out maybe two or three times a year. And I think there's probably a lot of other smaller households here that also don't use it every other week because um, also I've done yard work where I've decreased all of my plants to water-worthy plants so I don't have a lot of green waste either. So for the, for the single family or the single person or the one or two 
uh, retired folks uh, that live in these smaller or smaller households. I think it's unfair to uh, pay this full amount for a service that we're not going to use all the time. I see the low income people are going to get discounts for things. I see big apartment buildings are going to get discounts, but us one or two person households still have to pay the same amount when we aren't using this service. So, and then again, if we're taking, we or all of the folks here who do have bigger households taking a lot of the waste out of their smaller uh, garbage bin and putting it in the big one, they should certainly uh, get a discount for their smaller garbage can that they won't be using as much or decrease their bin for that. So, okay, thank, thank you. you. Is there uh, is there a um, reduction in the in the rate with the size of the can ecology? Yes, um, I did want to clarify when I just wanted to clarify that we're not giving a mul the multifamilies any discounts. We're only giving them what single family residents are already getting. So I just kind of wanted to clarify that. Um, the, the, you can make a movement from a 32 gallon if you're successful in this program. You may, in moving your food scraps into the green, you'll find your gray card is getting um, less full. You may migrate into the 20 gallon. So there is still an option um, to participate in this program and still reduce your costs by reducing the size of your cart. Right, and just for the record, the 20 gallon is cheaper than the 32. Yes, yes right. it is. Okay. Um, Michael, 321 Cortland. Scraps. Right in the microphone. Oh, thank Freeze you. my food scraps? I mean, really, you guys. Um, the PG News tells us we've got to cut back here and there and now. Um, I honestly can't believe the uh, baloney that I'm being fed here. Freeze my food scraps? I mean, so my PG bill is going to go up so I can pay these guys more money. I mean, I, I'm glad I'm not wearing my hip waders, but I surely wouldn't need them here tonight. You know, and, uh, serious, folks. I mean, this is, this is like GD ridiculous. Uh, whatever time I get left, I want to yield it to the next person. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Heather Lata. Heather. Heather said I would like to speak to support the organic program. Hi. Thank you. Hello. Thank you for allowing us to speak. Um, I just wanted to come tonight with my husband, Jeremy. We just moved to San Bruno and bought a house here last year. And uh, we actually moved from another municipality in the Bay Area that did already have composting. And we did miss the opportunity to do municipal composting when we moved to San Bruno because we found that it was incredibly convenient and we really appreciated the ability that we had as a household to minimize our impact on the environment on on a weekly basis um, for really minimal additional cost. And so we are very supportive of the city doing this and uh, we had been concerned because of the way the, um, the flyer was sent out that only people who were protesting the initiative were going to be coming tonight and so we just want to make sure that you also heard uh, alternate voices who would support the program and support the city's ability to meet its 75% requirement. Um, at the same time, I am incredibly sympathetic to all of the people who are concerned about cost increases. And I do have a question. I don't know if this would be for Ecology or the city manager, but <clears throat> you had mentioned earlier, the finance manager perhaps had, that with single stream recycling, there were rate, in, uh, rate decreases that came back to people. But for this program, it seems like for, we'll just get compost, which for my husband and I who garden, that would be great, and maybe that would be an offset and maybe we'd even make more off of it. But I wonder if the organic materials being sold to local farms or somehow sold, if there'd be a way to have rate decreases in the future instead of just the compost material. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, can we get an answer to that one? If I might clarify, there was not a rate decrease that was implemented as a result of recyclables being sold by Recology, but rather a um, some money collected by Recology that then pays for services and allows for lower increases over time. So there wasn't necessarily a, a decrease in the rate, but the any monies that Recology receives as a result of services in San Bruno, including the sale of recyclables, 
offsets costs associated with the delivery of the services. Um, the idea about, I, I think the idea was selling compost, and, and that may be uh, just one of the benefits of this program and one of the services that is currently offered by Recology is the availability to residents of San Bruno of a high quality compost that results from the program. Um, whether there will be an opportunity to generate sufficient compost such that that could become a money-making venture for Recology, I'm sure that uh, that would be something that the company would like to look into and, and would certainly implement if, if there's an opportunity to do that. All right, I'd like to ask Recology to comment on that too because you have organics programs in a lot of other cities. So what happens with those huge piles of compost? Um, where we take our, our organic material to be processed, I don't have numbers, but I can say that overall, when they sell the overall compost to the farmers and, and, and such, the, the sales from that compost helps reduce our overall processing costs that we have to pay the processor. So if they didn't sell to the, to the farmers and whatnot, our cost to them may be that much higher. So I, I, it's kind of similar to our single stream. We're getting the sales and we're, we're pushing it back to the residents. They're selling the compost and then reducing the processing costs for us in terms, and I can pass on a lower processing cost to the residents. Okay, and where is that compost available? It's gonna be made available to the residents. We will bring a compost giveaway to the city of San Bruno annually. And um, to give you a preview, we're actually gonna have a booth at the farmer's market on July 28th, and we'll have um, compost readily available then. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Paul, and I don't, I, it's hard for me to read your last name. You're on Pepper Drive. Paul's still here? Yep. Paul? First off, uh, the gentleman's point over here where he's talking about this not being democratic. It is democratic, but you call it our program, which kind of assumes that it's gonna be a done deal. Um, out of the 350 responses that you got, you didn't tell us how many of them were negative, how many of them were positive. Could you give us that answer? 346 were uh, opposed to the rate increase and one was in favor. I think that's pretty telling. And I think uh, not everybody's talked yet, but I think we're all in the same position. We don't like this. It's 10% increase. And you also said that we don't know what the future increases are gonna be. If it's not cost effective, we shouldn't spend the people's money, which is our money, our, the money that we earn, to pay for something that has no value other than it's gonna make compost that's gonna get sold to somebody and we don't know how much that gets, how much revenue that makes and how much it's gonna reduce our costs. Yet we already know how much our rates are gonna go up, but we don't know how much the offset is. So if you can't answer that question, I think it's something we gotta think about before we go down this road. Um, The other thing you said it was a, it was a state goal. Is it a state law, a state requirement? We already exceed the goal, so why are we doing it? It doesn't make sense to me that we have to do something just because it wants us, you just want us to feel good about saving stuff. The other thing is the 20-gallon container. I have that already to save $5 a month, but I don't even fill that up. So if, if my gray garbage is going down, and my green garbage is gonna go up, it's a, it's a uh, zero sum game where I still have the same amount of garbage. But is that gray garbage in our footprint in the, um, uh, the landfill cost gonna go down? If that's going down, then why are we paying for, for that landfill? It should be uh, a cost, um, I guess what's the right word for it? We're spending less money filling up landfill so it sh our cost should go down. It shouldn't be a 10% increase. All right, thank you. Any comment, Recology, on, on how rates are figured? I know that you, you pass them on, and everyone should know that not only Recology figures this out, but we do independent audits, and uh, a lot of things factored into this, and a lot of that has to do with the, the charge that is put on Recology and other garbage companies to actually dump. So maybe you can make some comments there. Yes, during the, the rate process that we delivered to the city of San Bruno, it did take into consideration a migration factor. So we do realize that less waste is gonna to go to the landfill, but that particular waste is now going to be processed as organic. So we did, we did reduce the landfill 
what we pay to the, what we would what we would pay to the landfill and took into consideration then what we would need to pay to the processor so we did shift the pendulum Is that right? shift the pendulum one way down and the other way up so we did take that into consideration all right but the fact is that it doesn't go into the landfill it gets it actually gets you at a, at a cost to everybody it actually get used for something instead of just being buried I guess right? yes so yeah we know so less is going to be buried and and more that is going to be processed into organic material okay and it's not just the cost of landfill as everybody knows it, it has to do with you just see the cost of fuel alone for some of these trucks um, and it, there are a lot of factors it's pages and pages and pages of facts and figures that are in fact independently audited um, uh, by uh, independent auditors hired by the city so it's nothing that you know recology submits to us and we just take their word so you should you should know that we watch it very carefully and uh, some of the subcommittee meetings are uh, a little hmm. active and heated but anyway um, are there any more cards Carol the, the gentleman asked about uh, the it was a state goal or requirement oh, yeah, yeah. in regards to the 75 percent in 2020 happy to answer that question is it a requirement or is it a goal? Answer it. I, I'm happy to answer that question uh, AB 939 that was adopted in the um, late 1980s was a requirement. As I indicated, we have uh, in the city of San Bruno have met that requirement. Um, the the uh, current state law calls for a goal of 75% to be implemented by the year 2020. What is, um, what I would expect in terms of the way that the state does business and its um, uh, implementation of this type of standard and others is that it will continue to monitor and evaluate the statewide performance towards the achievement of that goal. Um, we could expect that if progress is not seen as satisfactory or adequately um, uh, progressive, that we might expect that that could turn into a mandate or a requirement similar to the one that was imposed a number of years ago under AB 939, where actually uh, there were $10,000 a day penalties and the like. Um, but very specifically, the 75% diversion by the year 2020 is currently articulated in state law as a goal. Okay, thank you. The question was, if they don't have data on the actual reduction, how can they make that calculation? We took data from our neighboring cities that have the program, and what we used was their shift in, um, when they reduced from a 32-gallon with the program implemented, how many shifted from a 64-gallon to a 32-gallon, and how many shifted from a 32-gallon to a 20-gallon. So it, it's not an exact science. It's an estimate. Um, I hope. The city of San Bruno exceeds that estimate in their diversion. All right. Well, 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 well we're, you're, we're on camera here, so I'd like you to speak into the mic. And if you haven't filled out a card, at least tell us your name and your street, please. I'm Susan Caudill, and I'm on the Hawthorne. Uh, my question is, when was the last waste characterization? So we know exactly how much organics are in the waste stream. So we can then determine how much will be taken out to meet the requirement. And where are, are the organics um, processed? OK, thank you. OK, thank you. I'm going to ask Felicia. I don't believe I don't have the data of when the last waste characterization was taken from the gray cans in San Bruno. I can certainly look back to see when the last one was done. I don't have the date here. Um, the organics is processed in Gilroy. Can you see that? No. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't. You want to add something? Please come up to the mic. And 
Tell us your name and street again, please. And pull that down, right? Yeah. There you go. My name is Paula Dagovic. I am on Monterey Drive. And I have two questions. First of all, we, everybody talks about the increase, and nobody talks about the practicality of the thing. Our containers are not suited for that. We will have flies, we will have rodents, we will have everything. And when the wind blows, they come open, and then what? So we need new containers for that. We need containers which would lock up and not open when it's windy. Otherwise, you, you will have it spread all over. It will be a disaster. And how many people can divide everything in organic, not organic, and recycling is okay. But the food, we have to have special containers for home and outside. And this is only can happen if you help with that. You have, we need new containers, and this will cost again. So it should be solved as a total problem, not just a piece of this and a piece of that. If we don't have a full understanding how it will work, we can take you know, this ordinance and put it September or January or November. We have to be sure that this works and works to our advantage, not disadvantage. So please take it into consideration. All right, thank because you. Because I can envision the mass which we will have. All right, thank you. To Recology, again, um, we do have little microclimates here in San Bruno, hills and flatlands. I know, uh, does San Francisco have the organic program? Yes. Yeah, they do. They and do. I, they have the same situation there. How does it work? Uh, tell us about containers. Is there, are there plans to, to change containers, the configuration, that type of thing in the future? And uh, I think the, the flyer and probably the website uh, talks about uh, yard waste, food waste, and soil paper products pretty well. So I don't think there's a whole lot that uh, uh, is not included in that, but maybe you sure. could explain that a little bit more. Sure, the containers that you currently have um, at your residential homes will suffice and, and accept the food material. We use the same containers as they do in San Francisco and up and down San Mateo County. Um, in response to how do we know if it's gonna work, we're getting a lot of people come to San Bruno to work. We have Walmart, we have YouTube, we have big companies here where customers come from other cities and from San Francisco to work. Um, they're asking their employer, why can't I compost here in San Bruno? Why can't I do it? I love doing it at my, at my home. I wanna do it here. This is kind of where we got to the point of offering the program when we needed to help with the diversion. We also said, you know what? A lot of uh, people coming here to work and residents are reaching out to say, asking when San Bruno is going to move towards organics. Um, the city, uh, San Francisco, they do not lock their containers. Um, up and down the peninsula, nobody locks their containers. Um, if they've had any kind of problems, they've worked to resolve them, where, whether they are doing the, you know, the baking soda or, <coughs> or the other tips that we've recommended, it's working in the other cities that have organics currently. Okay. quickly because we don't want this to get helter skelter here. Um, Tell us your name and your street, please. Uh, Patty Panjang. I'm first time in the council meeting, but I look on this uh, important program. Uh, I see that the only look at the chart over there, it's very obviously only San Bruno uh, city is have increased. Look at other city, four city, all this listed on there. From the, the 32 gallon today, and uh, have that organic, that one. It's the same amount. So why only San Bruno will increase? If you keep the same rate, we are very welcome to this program. So yeah. please consider. Yeah, maybe to recology again, I, I don't think this uh, <coughs> shows the, the, um, the fluidity, if you will, of rate increases up and down the peninsula. It's a sort of a static graph at this point in time, but believe me, other cities are increasing, they're doing the same thing. 
So. Yeah, I, I actually will, I, um, will answer that question. This graph just takes the data as of this point in time. It does not consider any future rate increases in other jurisdictions because we're not entirely certain what those rate increases and in, that schedule is different. So it's meant to only be compared to, compared to this point in time. So these rates are the rates in these other cities today. We don't know if come January 2014 whether or not they will have also um, introduced a rate increase. So I just want to be clear on why that appears the way it does. Okay. You've got to make it quick now because sure. you've been up a few times. Got it. Yeah. So um, we, t we collect the organics and then we put them in a truck and we drive them to Gilroy. <laughs> and then we get the compost wait, wait from second. Gilroy and we drive it back to San Bruno. I just want to get clear on this. Is that, that's what we do? She'll, she'll answer the question. Yes, the compost is collected at the curb by a truck, into it, and it goes into the truck. We take it to our transfer station in San Bruno, where it's then loaded into a semi. The semi then delivers the material to the processor. Then we will, when, it's, when we're ready, we will backhaul. So we don't need to send another truck. We'll use that same truck to then bring the organic material to the compost giveaway. So there'll be, it's just, we're going to be very efficient and backhaul while we're already there. We're going to then dump it here and then go pick up some compost and bring it back. There is not. It'll be an agreed upon location between Recology and, and the city. Yeah, the question was, where will the compost giveaway be? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. All right. Carolyn? <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn, you had a question or comment? Yeah, I have a comment. I am opposed to this for various reasons, but I won't go into that. What I am concerned about is not having these cans locked. We've had a lot of wind, as you know, and we have particularly have it up on the hill. And I recently had a very bad experience where both my cans went over. I put them out in the morning. And uh, about four o'clock, I put them out because I thought it'd be safe. At 5.30, I was out there trying to pick it all up. And at that time, I was still recuperating from a hip and back situation. And I had to go out there by myself. The stuff, I not only had my garbage and my trash all over, but I had everybody else in the neighborhood in my front yard. And I was out there in that wind and cold trying to pick that stuff up. So if you're going to jam this down our throat, at least make it so that we don't have problems. Are there uh, lockable containers, Kirsten? There are lockable containers out there, but they would need to be unlocked in order to be serviced by Recology. So the truck couldn't pull up and just load it up and throw mm -mm, it in? Because they'd be locked. If they were unlocked, yeah. So you can do whatever you need to do to your container during the week and overnight, but it needs to be serviceable by 6 a.m. on service day. Okay, thank you. Heidi Beck, Acacia Avenue. I'd also like to complain about the containers. You know, I live near City Park. It's very, very windy in our neighborhood, and also because I live near City Park, we have an incredible amount of trouble with vermin and people going through the trash and whatever. So it's, it's a mess, and we have three cans now to deal with. We used to only have one can and you know we had the recycling bins. Now we have three cans. Uh, I live in a neighborhood where a lot of people don't have side yards. Well I know according to the city ordinance you're not supposed to keep your garbage cans out front but people don't have side yards and you've got three big heavy cans. Our yard for example I was told oh just keep it in your garage. Well we have one of those houses where the garage is you know under uh, bedrooms. It's part of the house. You want to have stinky garbage under your bedroom? No I don't think so. Oh, well, then put it in your backyard. Well, my backyard, th the large green can, barely fits through my back door to the backyard. Plus, I have stairs to the backyard. I'm supposed to lug that thing up and down the stairs? You know, we need something to help people because, I mean, I'm still strong enough, but I'm going to be a senior citizen before too long. And what do people do with these big, heavy cans that are hard to maneuver, that blow over in the wind. Our neighborhood always looks like crap on garbage day because 
garbage cans blow over or get knocked over by raccoons. All the crows come from the, you know, and the seagulls. I mean, they have a feast in our neighborhood. And, you know, what, it, it's just a mess. And that's what I'd like to complain about. Thank you. All right, thank you. I'm afraid there's not a whole lot we can do about seagulls and, I mean, the giants have the same problem, but uh, um, it's, uh, it's, it's because we live in a pretty diverse community. Diverse, I mean, older homes, smaller homes, larger homes, no garages, uh, a lot more cars per unit, um, and it's windy in, at times, and there's not a whole lot we, in fact, can do about that. So it's just, just a fact. We used to have uh, three bins where you'd put stuff in uncovered. And that was, I think, at that time, a lot worse. So we have come a long way with a single stream recycling can, and that's an improvement. But we're always striving to work with Recology to, to improve the situation. So, and let's just wrap it up with you. Can you tell us your name and your, yeah. and your street, one, please? One minute. I just want to, Nick DeMario from uh, 370 Cortland Drive. Uh, I just want to second all the problems that I've, we've been having with garbage blowing around. In my letter to the city, I proposed we provide some sort of a hasp or locking mechanism. You don't have to lock it with, you know, for security reason. We just want to make sure it doesn't open during the wind. And that's what I propose to do in addition to, I don't want to talk about the other issues. It's been well covered. All right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. This is a public hearing. If we close the public hearing, you're going to be precluded from speaking on this again. Uh, is that it? Do I have a motion to close? Uh, move to close the public hearing. Second. Motion and second on the question. In favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, discussion by the council, action by the council. Through the chair. Michael. Just wanted to make a, a few comments. Um, so one, um, one thing that comes to mind, there, there was a comment regarding uh, this program failing in another city. And uh, so I just wanted to highlight the point that if we do make this commitment, um, the majority of the cost that's uh, incurred is for the purchase of two new vehicles. And so the solution becomes somewhat permanent. <clears throat> uh, so I just wanted to highlight that because one of the initial considerations was that we do a pilot program prior to having to make this discussion, and then as we um, studied this further, uh, it became obvious that this is probably a program that we should support. Um, and so we didn't necessarily defer the decision to, to vote on it at this point. Uh, and so that pilot program may be coming a bit late, and so we, will, we hope to get real data from that pilot program, but if we make a decision uh, to let Recology proceed and they purchase their vehicles, it's not something that we can easily take back. So uh, I just wanted to highlight that uh, as, as part of our decision-making process that uh, it's, uh, it won't be as easy to take that back. Um, and that also, um, I wanted to uh, comment on the fact that we, uh, we had studied this uh, to some extent. Um, there is some perception that perhaps we're rushing into this and we haven't studied this, but this, um, this option came to us last year and uh, because of the fact that I felt that we didn't have enough uh, information, um, we decided not to implement it last year and we held off and we asked Recology to go back and collect more information and uh, we wanted to do, uh, I wanted to do some of my own research and I think we've uh, all become a little bit more familiar with the programs, with similar programs in other cities and how it can be implemented and what the real costs are. We had an opportunity to go back and have an independent um, audit on what was going on and uh, whether or not the, the costs <coughs> were uh, fair. And so I, I just wanted to um, assure the public that we have done to our best ability uh, some level of, of evaluation of this. We have studied it. Um, could we have studied it more? Uh, absolutely. Um, but th we certainly don't want to get into a situation where we do nothing and s simply study the problem over and over again and never take any action. I personally felt that there was enough empirical data gathered from what other cities are doing and enough interest from the public in adopting this program. I still feel that the adoption rate is going to be very low initially. 
uh, and I, I, I don't dispute that that's going to be the case. Uh, old habits are hard to break. Um, many years ago, I lived in San Francisco where this program was, was uh, being uh, rolled out, and I know it wasn't very popular, but it was slowly adopted, and over time, it became the norm. Um, I've seen this program in place at a number of large companies up and down the peninsula where employees are encouraged to do it, the bins are available to them in the cafeterias, and they're very well used. Um, I've seen our own Operation Clean Sweep where we provide the breakdown of, of these materials, and I see the kids gravitating and understanding. They get it. They want to participate. They want to do it. Um, I have teenagers at home. To them, it's, it, it's, these sorts of things are more second nature. It's harder for me to accept. Uh, it is more work, and uh, we are being asked to pay a penalty for the privilege of doing more work, of sorting our own garbage. Um, it, it's true for a lot of things. We, we ask everyone to conserve water, and as you use less water, uh, we have to now uh, still pay for the infrastructure, we have to pay for the pipes and the people that maintain the pipes. So those costs don't go away. If anything, they go up. So you use less water, yet we still ask you to pay more. It's um, a really unfortunate uh, reality. Um, but it, it doesn't go unnoticed. We, we do realize that that's the case, and we do realize that um, this is going to be, uh, as I mentioned, something that's going to be adopted slowly. It's going uh, it's to cause pain. But it really is, um, to me at least, obviously the direction that we are going in as a society. And we were going to have to adopt it sooner or later. And so as part of the subcommittee with the mayor, we agreed to bring that forward uh, for a vote today. I uh, certainly appreciate all the comments. Uh, I definitely understand and sympathize with, with all of them. Um, but I do believe that at this point we are somewhere where uh, this um, needs to become part of what we do. Um, one question I wanted to pose back to Recology, if I could. Um, we, we discussed that our particular program will not allow for the use of recyclable plastic bags, but there are other communities that do allow that. And so I wanted to just revisit that and ask if we were to do that. First of all, is, that, is it a possibility? Would we have to go with a different... Um, a different company to process it if that were the case and what would it do to our cost you are correct council member salazar if we chose to use a bag a program that allows biodegradable bags it is a different processor that is significantly farther and which would increase the cost that much more okay thank you so uh, you know the last comment i wanted to make uh, you know i, I was also concerned with uh, the carbon footprint what's it going to do to have two more trucks on the road and uh, Recology uh, confirmed that the new trucks would be biodiesel trucks, and so that would be minimized. And then there is an offset, and, and maybe you have more information on biodiesel. I, I assume biodiesel is by far cleaner than conventional diesel. I don't think the engines are, no, I don't think so. And I, I'm not sure about that either. Okay. And then, of course, uh, as uh, Kirsten mentioned, Kristen mentioned, uh, the um, there's there's a large amount of, of methane that's taken out of the air by doing this, by diverting it, and so hopefully, um, you know, we'll we'll see a, a net benefit to the environment by doing this, and so. Um, We really want to get this on. Really want to get this on camera. So if, if you have any more, con yeah, I, I, not so much on camera, but I want it to be recorded. So, uh, you know, the questions were and the comments were regarding the methane and the the um, the use of the biodiesel vehicles and, and do they actually help? I mean, they probably help some way because you're not buying <coughs> diesel gas. Uh, but maybe you can comment on on those. Kirsten. Sure, and um, we are held to a very high <coughs> emission standard that we are we have to report on annually. Um, so our trucks are uh, as clean as you can, uh, as clean as biodiesel can get. So we do use B20 in, in all of our trucks. So 20% of it is 80% um, is diesel fuel, and 20% is um, another think of it, oil, like regular oil. Sorry. Okay. All right. 
Anything so, else, Michael? Um, no, those were my comments. Irene? Thank you. I have a few more questions, Kirsten. Some of the concerns that were voiced were about the size of the green cans. Mm -hmm. Is there a smaller green can available? Absolutely, we can make smaller a smaller green can to available to those that would require one. Okay, and so they just what do they do? Just call you up and say, mm -hmm. I want to trade this in. Yeah. Okay, that's one Absolutely. thing. So that that should help with some of that. Um, then people are talking about, and I've experienced myself, that the wind blows the carts over and that comes in and the raccoons get it and all those things. And I know you can't lock them because the drivers then can't dump the, the garbage, but uh, is there a possibility of, in as we migrate to different, like if somebody migrating from a 60 to whatever, 60, whatever it is, to a 32, or if they migrate from a, well, that's a liner, but do, are there carts available that have, I mean, cans available that have latches that people could get, or is there, are there tips that people, that you, could be on your website that show people how they could latch their containers while still allowing the garbage trucks to, to dump the things without unlocking them? Yeah. That's a tortured sentence, but I hope you understand <laughs> what I'm asking. I can absolutely empathize with, with the comments made that cans can tip over and all the mess comes out. Um, Nowhere, any of the cities that I've spoken to up and down the peninsula utilize any type of locking mechanism on their carts. Um, and a latch kind of thing? Nobody puts, they don't have latches on their carts. They, nobody uses a latch on their carts. It, it, you know, you're welcome to put a latch on your cart as long as it's serviceable on service day. If it opens, if it, we tip it and everything comes out and it goes back down, absolutely, if that gives you, the resident, a piece of comfort, that, that's okay, as long as it's serviceable is what I need to, to put emphasize. out there. It needs to be serviceable in the, okay. by 6 a.m. Okay, thank you. Anything else? No. no Rico? No. Um, first of all, we <coughs> say, you said a couple times 6 a.m. I was under the impression it was serviceable at 7 a.m. because I'm, I'll just tell you I don't meet the 6 a.m. deadline. So is it 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. that the garbage needs to be out in front of the house? 6 a.m. Okay. You might not be serviced until 7, and, and if that... And I guess service do. later, but, but I just thought it was 7 a.m. once when I called some time ago um, because I was, I was missed, and so I thought maybe I didn't get it out in time. So you're saying that the rule is 6 a.m.? Yes. Okay. That was just for more, I guess, personally I wanted to know, <laughs> but I thought it was 7. Um, a few things. Uh, first, uh, I think it was Mike who brought up the question about a return card, which is an interesting concept, which uh, I don't know if 218 specifies uh, that way or not because it is a protest vote, but it was an interesting concept. I hadn't thought about it until you mentioned it. So I don't know if the city attorney could just for, as, as an interest for future to see, because obviously I mean, this requires for any type of increases. Um, I know that um, I'm going to go back in time and think back to when we got the green waste, uh, the green uh, for the uh, the greens and stuff. That there once was a latch, if I'm not mistaken. There used to be a black latch that over time maybe got worn and it came off. But now again, maybe I'm wrong. But that's what my memory is telling me. So, uh, am I wrong or? Um, no, I, I believe you are right because I believe the one that I inherited had some sort of latch. I don't. I'd have to find out what the change was made, whether the cart company doesn't provide them that way anymore, or if there was a serviceable problem with that latch. So I would be happy to get back to, to staff and council as to what what change was made at, at that period of time. It's been a long time. Um, in regards to this matter, um, and I appreciate everybody's comments because I think you wouldn't realize uh, from what I've read and what I've heard, there's some ideas and thoughts that come up that we don't think of. And we're not the experts of everything. Um, sometimes people come up with something and at the grocery store, and it, it astounds me. So I appreciate that. Um, one thing that was mentioned by a gentleman I, re I do respect immensely was about maybe you know things already being sized up and votes kind of already cast per se. And I, I know there was no no it, there wasn't anything negative. It was just kind of a, a thought. Uh, but I personally have had wrestled with this. I hadn't made my mind up, and at 2 o'clock, I had a, the garbage company had an uninvited, unwelcome, um, I wouldn't say unwelcomed, but unannounced guest at me at the counter today. 
So I drove over there because I still had questions. I wanted to go to the plant. I wanted to talk to somebody. I wanted to understand. I wanted to see or get some visuals to what I could to try to better understand it because I'm somebody who likes to see things tangibly or have a face-to-face. So not being on the subcommittee, I wanted to take that opportunity, and, and I didn't have an appointment, but they were gracious enough to, to let me be seen, and, and I appreciate that. This was something that when it came up a year ago, I voted against. And I voted against it because of the, the rate increase that was occurring back then when the information we had, as Councilmember Salazar said. It was a 3-2 vote, but in the end, it became a 5-0 vote, and it was, only, and it was raised 2.46, I'm not remembering correctly, uh, back then. And it was to postpone it and put it off. And nothing is ever for sure, because when the water and sewer rates came up, I voted against them. It was a 3-2 vote. It wasn't a 5-0. And that was because I believed they had to go up for what needed to be done, but they were going up too fast, too high, and would hurt too many. So I voted no, but it's a democracy, and we're going forward and making progress. So as I weighed all those things, and I went down there today, and probably after listening to you folks, um, I, I hear what you're saying, and I understand you have valid issues, concerns, and some complaints. Uh, but I do believe we can certainly put this off again I think this is something that um, is necessary for us, just like plastic bags, and I was having a hard time thinking about that one and changing, as Councilmember Salazar said, but in my trunk tonight, there are reusable bags because that's the way it is, and that took me a little bit of time. Um, I think this is something that the city probably is going to need to do. I think that uh, we need to meet standard. I'm also being told in 2025, potentially the landfills in our area, correct me, will may be at capacity, and we therefore don't have that as an option, and then we're gonna have to go either than outside here to actually uh, get rid of our waste. Is that correct, or am I wrong? No, that's very correct. Things like that concern me for the future, not only for this town to meet what requirements, goals, and the state will eventually set down to us more rules that require us to do more with what we have, which in, uh, end up affecting all of us, and that's how it works. So we have a city, a requirement to meet. We're going to have future requirements to meet. I worry about the future of the landfill, not in my time, but for when I'm not up here and when I'm no longer in this community. And I'm hoping that's a long time for me still living in San Bruno, but I do think it, it's, it's going to be a step that we need to take. And so um, with all that weight, I'm going to favor this, but this is with a lot of, a lot of soul searching and stuff because Salazar, Mr. Councilman Salazar is correct. The, the costs are for the trucks. It's for the extra staff people. So this is going to be initiated, and that's where a large uh, part of these costs are going to. So um, that's where a lot of the increase is really derived. So those are some of my comments. Thank you. I was also on the uh, subcommittee with Michael Salazar, and so I won't need to reiterate what he said, which is right on target. We studied this a long time. We studied it a year ago. We wanted more information. We wanted to wait. And uh, you know, I think it's just the right thing to do um, in the bigger picture. I'm thinking about my grandkids down the road and not having, like we used to have, you know, piles of garbage that just get thrown into landfill. San Bruno uh, won an award a number of years ago for initiating recycling, and we're, we're a top city now because of that. And you know, people said recycle. Ah, we got these three bins. Well, you don't have three bins now. We're able to get the single stream. And now I believe uh, it's positive for organics. I'll be one of the first to know because it turns out I got my letter the other day and I happen to be on the trial program. So I'll, uh, I'll let you know at the Molly Stones or Lunardi's how it's going. But uh, I, I think it's really important. One question for Recology though. Michael mentioned the timing of the program versus the purchase of the vehicles. Is there any flexibility there if this is approved tonight? Do you go out tomorrow and order them or is there is there a period of time for you to say, whoa, this is really not working here at all. We, we're not gonna purchase these. There is a time frame in which we need to provide new vehicles on the streets by January 1st. Okay. Um, so if you were to move forward with this program today, we would initiate that, that purchase. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, um, any more comments from the council or action by the council? This is... Uh, a, uh, requesting to waive the first reading and introduce ordinances uh, separately, I'm assuming. Yes. Okay. 
I'll start with a motion to uh, waive the first reading for um, the first ordinance, which is imposing a 2.61% rate increase. Second. It's a motion and second. Uh, on the question, all in favor? Aye. 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 Someone like to introduce the uh, ordinance? I will introduce the first ordinance imposing a 2.61% rate increase. Council Member Salazar? Aye. Council Member Medina? Aye. Vice Mayor O'Connell? Aye. Mayor Ruane? Aye. On item B. I will make a motion to waive the first reading on the second ordinance imposing a 4.48% rate increase for recology. Second. Motion is second on the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Would someone like to introduce the ordinance? Go ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll introduce the ordinance. Ordinance. Vice Mayor O'Connell? Aye. Council Member Salazar? Aye. Council Member Medina? Aye. Mayor Ruane? Aye. Thank you. Considering the crowd, uh, we're going to take just a five minute recess. So, if you, uh, unless you want to hear the uh, inner report of the Culture and Arts Commission, which will happen next. So, right. thank you.